Dr. Stocks, thank you so much for joining us. We're talking about something you hear about quite a bit more recently than in the past, restless leg syndrome. Uh, starting this uh, segment off, advancements have been made in the sleep treatment of sleep disorders. Talk about why treating sleep disorders is important to patient care. Well, good sleep is an important part of good health and well-being. When you sleep well, you feel well. We've heard about sleep apnea, but as I said at the start of the segment, restless leg syndrome is kind of a new thing in the lexicon. What is it? Well, number one, it's not new. The original descriptions of restless legs are decades ago, uh, long ago. But with you know, media allowing everyone to recognize and hear words, et cetera. Uh, we know about it more. We, we hear about restless legs. And more importantly, people are more inclined to talk about it because we have some medications that work pretty well for it now. If a person moves his or her legs during the night, is that automatically a sign of restless leg oh, syndrome? Oh, no, no, no. All of us move uh, intermittently uh, through the night. We roll from side to side. Uh, we stretch our legs, we stretch our arms. All of that is to keep blood moving and prevent pressure sores, and we do all of that unconsciously. Uh, abnormal movements are an entirely different thing. Is it like snoring? Is it the person you sleep with more likely to notice it than the person who actually suffers the problem? Well, you would be utterly unaware of what you do during your sleep, whereas your bed partner is all too aware <laughs> of what you do wrong during your sleep, at least in, in so far as it ruins their night. So is it bed partners that tend to recognize the symptom? Well, restless legs has two parts to it. There's the part that occurs in people when they're awake and they themselves are aware of it. And then there's the part that occurs during their sleep. They might be aware that they wake up tired, but they really wouldn't know what was going on during their sleep unless their bed partner told them. What causes restless leg syndrome? <clears throat> we kind of think that uh, these disorders are a problem with iron metabolism in the brain, uh, which is why we see it uh, frequently in people who are iron deficient, in women who are pregnant, in patients with chronic renal disease. Uh, but it, it, it can occur without obvious iron deficiency, and, and yet we still think that the problem may center in the brain as a metabolic problem. You may have touched on this. Is there someone, is there a typical sufferer? Is there someone typically more, more likely to get it? Uh, someone who's iron deficient. It's very common in pregnancy. It's very common in uh, people with kidney disease. Uh, it's common in people with anemia of other varieties. And it does tend to run in families. So if mom has restless legs, it's not uncommon for children to have it too. It is a bit more frequent in women than men. How do you evaluate a patient you suspect may have restless leg syndrome? Well, again, there's two parts to the disorder. The part that interferes with sleep, you either have to do a sleep test or you have to interview the bed partner to get an idea. But the part of restless legs uh, which occurs when you're awake, uh, you simply ask questions. There's really not a test for it per se. And we describe restless legs as an ill-defined discomfort in your legs, occasionally your arms, that seems to temporarily be relieved by movement, such as stretching your legs, getting up and walking. Well, if you have restless legs uh, that's pretty severe, it may be very tough to walk and go to sleep at the same time, so that can be a problem. But, but we test it by asking questions not necessarily by doing a test. Is diagnosing restless leg syndrome important or not? It, well, if it's your legs and your discomfort, <laughs> yes, it's very important. It, it's not a dangerous disorder. Uh, other than ruining uh, uh, some people's sleep, it, it's not something that leads generally to cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke. It's not necessarily a disease that's gonna shorten your life but it certainly can make your life miserable. Possessed of a diagnosis, how do you treat it? 
there are medications that are available. The newest class of drugs that are, are reasonably effective for restless legs are the drugs that we also use to treat Parkinson's disease. And that's not to say someone with restless legs has or is going to get Parkinson's disease. It's that the drug seems to work for both conditions. Um, there are other uh, older medications uh, in the Valium family that we will occasionally use as well. And of course, if someone does actually have iron deficiency, treatment with iron supplementation may be a, a, an important part of the therapy. Now that there's media awareness, you see uh, TV commercials for over-the-counter treatments for restless leg. What about those? That's where they should stay, over-the-counter. Most of them don't work. There, there are some people that have found benefit uh, using topical agents for their legs that um, uh, are also used for peripheral neuropathy conditions. Um, there's some pepper ointment that uh, some of my patients have found valuable. But by and large, the over-the-counter preparations are, in my opinion, a waste of money. Very well, doctor. Very informative, and we thank you for your time. You're welcome.